$5,413, a goodly sum. It's just wonderful the way everyone responded to our plea. This more than takes care of the deficit. Yes, it does. Hey, it's getting late. i better get on home. I'll walk into the bank the first thing in the morning, Arthur. Thanks, Dan. I'll appreciate that. Dan, before you go home, will you help me look for Barney? I'm really worried about him. Oh, sure, Molly. Come on. trustees of Halfway House, I wasn't surprised to receive an urgent call from the house the morning following the robbery, but I certainly was unprepared for the delegation awaiting my arrival and the reason for their anxiety. Uh, just a moment, please. Please. I, I'm a little bit confused. I thought you wanted to see me to uh, arrange emergency finances so the house could continue operation until we recovered the money. I don't know anything about the man who committed the robbery. But that's why we're here, Mr. Mayor, is to get you to help Barney. And speaking as a former jurist of some renown, myself, Mr. Maris, I want you to know that Barney is not capable, mentally, of pulling off such a caper. If he's innocent, he'll be released. Oh, it isn't as simple as that, Mr. Maris. I know, I don't blame the police for not believing him. You know, sometimes he exaggerates his stories. You see, what Molly is trying to say is that Bernard has a reputation with the constabulary of being known as a low-down, no Oh, well, you shut your mouth or I'll box you one! I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. Bonnie and I are engaged to be married. He's turned over a whole new leaf, and he's got a job, and he's starting to save all his dough. I had a talk with our manager, Mr. Fletcher, this morning. He's in the hospital with a sprained back, and he is very reluctant to accuse Barney of being his assailant. Did the police recover any of the $5,000? Not a red cent. Barney wouldn't have stole that much dough. And that's my contention, too. Barney's idea of wealth is $500. Now, anything beyond that is incomprehensible. Look, Mr. Maris, I know you're a very important lawyer, and we're just some people from Skid Row. I don't even have enough dough to pay you. Well, what I want to say is, Unless somebody tries to help Barney, he's going to wind up in the clink for sure. You know what I think? I think that Barney's a very lucky man to have someone like you believing in him, Mrs. Nielsen. Let me see what I can find out. Thank you. Thank you. Herb, I know what an easy mark you are for a good sob story, but here are four different versions of what happened last night, all Barney's, and they make just about as much sense as you coming here trying to help him. You're so certain he's the criminal, 
What's your case against him? Well, Dan Coleman's been on that beat for 20 years, knows everybody down there. He arrested Barney. Apprehended in an alley about 10 minutes after robbery, claimed to have been pursuing robbers, no money in possession, but discovered jiggler in coat pocket. What's a jiggler? It's a burglar's tool. Barney denied ever having seen it before, claims it was planted on him by one of the crooks during the fight. Gash on his head corresponding to wound Fletcher claims to have made on assailant at top of staircase. Isn't it possible he did get in a fight with the real robbers? I'll tell you what, Herb, rather than let you take up my whole day telling me what a nothing case I have against this guy, let's go see him, huh? I'd like to. It is a sad commentary on our civilization, gentlemen, when an honest, law-abiding citizen is bought this is the worst stew I ever tasted. While you're forcing it down, Barney, would you tell Mr. Maris what your motive was for the robbery? I could use a little more bread and butter. Motive? What are you talking about, Sergeant? For your information, Barney, I'm a lieutenant. For your further information, let me remind you that you were in a dice game last night and lost $123. Oh, that is a lie. If I've done any gambling since I went to work three months ago, may the devil take me. We did a little checking, Barney. You were fired yesterday. Then at 7 o'clock, you went over to the Ace High Pool Parlor and got into a crap game. If you're innocent, Barney, all you have to do is tell the truth. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. As Abe Lincoln used to say, the truth is, is stranger than fiction. Could I have a little more bread and butter? I understand you get a lot more to eat at the state pen, Barney, so the sooner you confess, the sooner you'll be eating better. Did you hear that, Counselor? Third degree in me he was. Barney, what happened last night at Halfway House? There's a weird, incredible story. Oh, bad. It was about 2 a.m. And me reeling home after being robbed and beaten, mind you. Well, the house was dark and it was quiet. And then I heard terrible screams. Well, I, I rushed in and I saw poor old Fletcher being killed by this mob of masked bandits. Oh, there were five or six of them, at least. Version number five. Barney. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. No, you're not. Maybe you think this is all one big joke. Or maybe you don't care if you're sent to prison. Oh, now, hold on, son. Now, you hold on. So far, I've given up three hours of a very busy day trying to help you. You know why I bothered with you at all? No, sir. Because a woman by the name of... Molly Nielsen came to see me this morning and asked me to help you. Molly did that? She loves you. Frankly, I think she's wasting her time. So do I, son. So do I. And there's no sense you wasting your time on the likes of me, so you go on and go now. Barney, I didn't say I wanted to go. But I did say I wanted to get the truth. Now, do you want to try again? Well, uh, I'll try. It is true that I lost my job. Though through no fault of my own, mind you. And I did get into that crap game and I went broke. And I'll bet you anything it was a crooked game, too. Go on. Well, I, I guess I went out and tied on a couple. Because, you see, the reason I got into that game in the first place was Molly promised to marry me if I ever saved up $500. And I felt awful lucky last night. Well, what happened after you got back to Halfway House? Well, I, I sneaked in the back way. And I waited till Molly left, you see. So I went upstairs to bed. At least I was starting into the dormitory. And I heard Arthur yell. And it was, it was awful dark. And that's when this, that's when this fella hit me, do you see? He must have been a big fella. Or maybe there was two of them, I don't know. But I, I punched one of them in the nose and I, and I fought the other. And... Barney, uh, are you sure about these two men? Well, maybe not. It, it, it was dark, but, but somebody clouted me and somebody pushed Arthur over the balcony. And I rushed down there and he was out cold. And, and the box with the money in it wasn't anywhere around. And I, I, I ran outside to see if I could find the crooks. And when I came back, Danny Coleman pinched me. That's all I know. All right, Barney. I'll see what I can do for you. 
You, you mean you're coming back here? You're going to help me? I'll see that you get some more bread and butter, Bonnie. Oh, Sergeant, I lost my appetite. How, how can anybody eat in a time like this? Oh, Sergeant, you might ask them if they've got a little pie. I'm not saying that Bonnie was in on this alone. Molly's way behind their bills in a restaurant. She could have helped him. What about the people at Halfway House? Couldn't one of them have done it? Well, there were eight of them sleeping there at the time when it happened. The judge testified to that. What about the judge? I suppose you could consider him a possible suspect. He's been trying to raise money for years to publish his book on his Skid Row adventures. But why provide an alibi for eight other possible suspects? Well, there's Fletcher. Yes, but I don't think he would have picked Barney as a partner to stage this heist. Besides, I think Barney knows where the money's hidden. He had plenty of time to hide that box. What about Officer Coleman? I'm glad you brought that up, Counselor. Because cops are no different than anybody else. They're human beings. They have the same money troubles and temptations as anybody else. But I've known Dan Coleman for 20 years, and he's an honest man. But just to prove to you that I'm not railroading Barney, I'm checking on Danny Coleman and everybody else. I'm not accusing you of railroading anybody, John. Now, why don't you relax? Well, in a minute or two more, Mr. Maris, you'd have missed me. Doctor says I'm a very lucky man not to have suffered more. I can go back to the house. Yeah, it won't be a very happy homecoming, though. Barney in terrible trouble. Honestly, I don't really think he did it. But you say you didn't actually see anybody else in the landing, yet you lashed out at somebody who grabbed at the strong box. Barney's forehead being cut is pretty damaging evidence against him. Oh, I know that, but, well, maybe the thief ducked back. Uh, maybe I hit Barney by accident. But who else could have committed the robbery? I don't know. And if it isn't recovered, we'll be forced to close our doors, won't we? The board is trying to raise more money. Meanwhile, we've... Uh, posted a reward of $500 for information leading to the arrest of the robber. I'll get it. Hello. Herb, Weston, I've been trying to find you. You want to come down to headquarters? I've got some news about your client. Lieutenant, something tells me you're the guiding genius behind this clever little stunt. I give you my word, Herb, I had nothing to do with it. Molly and the judge suggested bail. But getting the DA to set it so low, that had to be your doing. You know I wanted to keep him in jail so he couldn't get out and get into any more trouble? He's not going to get into any more trouble. Dan Coleman's keeping an eye on him. That's reassuring. Oh, just a moment, Herb. When I'm off duty, I consider you one of my best friends. Come next Sunday, I'm looking forward to our golf game. But right now, we're on opposite sides of the fence. Sure, I wanted your client out on bail. Why? Because I think he's guilty and I think he's going to prove it. Which way did he say he was going? He said he was starving. Left word with the release clerk that he was going to meet you tonight at Molly's. Oh, Herb! If it makes any difference, I hope I'm wrong. Hmm. I know you didn't swipe that dough, Barney. But if I find out you've lost your savings in that crap game, believe me, I swear I'll... Now, 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 now. Would I lie to my angel? No, not, I give you my word. I made an investment, and in a couple of weeks, it'll be paying me the $500 that we need to get married. Now, you'll see, it will. It will. Oh, Molly, if you only did the cooking down at the city jail. Oh, you. You know, I guess that's the reason I fell in love with you, little runt. You know, you eat more than any three guys I know. Well, uh, Molly. There, enjoy yourself. I gotta get the kitchen cleaned up. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Molly, telephone. Telephone, Molly. Oh, Molly's cafe. Huh? What'd you say? What? Wait a minute, who is this? Hello? Hello?
Well, how did you like? Oh, uh, Mr. Maris. Where's Barney? He was here just a minute ago. Barney! Barney! We better see if we can find him. Anything wrong? Come on. Shot Barney, do you? No, I don't think so, Dad. <laughs> Empty. This Fudges? Yeah. I better call headquarters. I'm sorry, Molly. Police sealed off a square half mile of the Skid Row area where Barney had disappeared. But by the following morning, he was still at large. I hate to say I told you so, huh? but it looks as if my hunch paid off. I'd still like to hear Barney's explanation. <laughs> you know what kind of a yarn he'll come up with. Yes, who is it? I'll put him on. Barney's on the phone. Let me talk to him. Ah, uh, Lieutenant, he's calling me. Yes, Barney, where are you? Oh, hello, son. I'm just calling you to say goodbye. Yeah, I'm out here near a bridge, and tonight when it's dark, I, I'm gonna jump off and into I see, then Molly and I were wrong about you all this time. Oh, no. No, I'd, I'd, I'd swallow my tongue if I'm not telling you the truth. But what with every cop in the city hounding me, and, and probably with orders to shoot me on sight, after last night, what chance have I got? I'd like to hear about last night, Barney. How'd you know where to find that box? Oh, would you be believing me if I told you that somebody phoned me while I was at Molly's place? And I, huh? I don't know who it was. But somebody told me if I went to that certain air vent and lifted it up, I'd find the proof of my innocence. That's what I was... Bloodhounds are getting closer, son. Goodbye. I heard. Well, you wanted to hear his side of the story. You satisfied? I don't know. Place was empty. I talked to Molly. Nobody phoned. She was in the back for over five minutes washing dishes. Somebody could have phoned without her hearing. What more proof do you need? On the night of the robbery, Barney grabbed the box, ran outside, broke it open, hid the money, and then dumped the box someplace in the alley. Now, he had to get it back before we did, didn't he? Because his fingerprints are all over it. Everything fits her. Now, that's the trouble. It all fits too well. Like, who's going to believe that story about the phone call? Oh. You think maybe that call could have come from the halfway house? Maybe. The judge and Fletcher were there. And your friend, the policeman, could have spotted him from out front. There you go again. You've been mentioning Dan Coleman all along, huh? Why didn't you tell me he's been on the Skid Row beat all these years as a punishment? Because it had nothing to do with this. Dan Coleman was involved in a political scandal. He's been clean for 20 years. Now, if you think he did it... I don't know who did it. But I'm getting more and more convinced that somebody's trying to frame Barney. <laughs> you never give up, do you? Well, I'll tell you what, Herb. We're bound to pick up Barney sometime today, and when we do, we'll find that money on him. Mr. Maris. That's all right. It's a pleasure to see you. Have you heard anything from old Barney? No, nothing new. No? Oh, by the way, uh, would you happen to have a match? Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I guess not. Well, that's quite all right. I'll save it till after dinner. Now, won't you sit down, Mr. Maris? You know, it is a grievous mistake coming back here. What do you mean? Open Bernard? Yes. Well, it's the neighborhood. It gets into your blood, and I don't know why it is, but most of us hate to leave here. You mean, even if you could afford to, you wouldn't live elsewhere? Where else would I go? I've been here longer than the present generation. Longer than Barney, and much longer than Fletcher. I know Fletcher hasn't been here as long as Bernard. Oh, yes. He's been here much longer. The fact of the matter is that I staked him before he rehabilitated himself. Fletcher was down here as... Yes, as a derelict. Same as the rest of us. Let me see, I think that was back in, uh, about 1930. Strange, I didn't know that. I thought he'd always been in social service work. Oh, no. He learned that after he came down here. In fact, the matter is, I think that his background was, uh, show business. Show business? One thing the judge had said gave me a possible lead. I went to the library and borrowed all of their back issues of theatrical trade papers. Hello? Uh, uh, we found him. Now, he didn't have any of the money on him, but I think by morning he'll tell us where it is. Maybe we can find it tonight, John. Stick around. I'm on my way down with some old news. If this reviewer is any criterion, not Fletcher's brand new acrobatic act. He's destined either for the palace or a Ziegfeld Follies. Arthur Fletcher? Look at the date. August 1930, just before the crash. A few months later, he was down in Skid Row. The climax to this thrilling act is a backward fall from a ten-foot parapet that would kill an ordinary person. A backward fall, huh? Fletcher was back in Halfway House when Barney received that phone call. And he's got a private phone in his office. <laughs> You're making me very curious, but... How do we prove that his background adds up to a robbery? Well, that's up to you. Oh, Barney could help, but we can't ask him to endanger himself. Well, supposing he volunteered, would you accept? You kidding? Can you see Barney volunteering for anything? Yes. Considering the stake. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. I just came for some of the money. That's all. What are you talking about? Oh, Arthur, let's not waste time. Here. Just read that. It ought to be worth about a grand to keep that out of the hands of the police. Don't you think so? I suppose so, Barney. Only I can't spare a dime of it. You know, Barney, I've worked too hard to get this money. Now, wait, I... Look, you... Easy, Art. Drop it. Arthur, where's the money? In my office. In a... in a compartment in my desk. I should have known Barney wasn't smart enough to find the clippings. One thing I don't understand, Fletcher. Why did you do it? I couldn't sleep nights thinking of that money. I had to have it. What would you do with it? Where would you go with it? Huh. That's funny, Mr. Maris. I... I really never considered that. I... Well, honestly, I don't know. Hey, look at Barney. <laughs> How do you like that? He's faded. Ha, 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 ha,